Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The big international story we are tracking this evening. Israel Defense Forces continue to pound Gaza with airstrikes uh, and have claimed to have encircled the Gaza city as the death toll of Palestinians crossed the 9,000 mark. The IDF is planning to deepen its ground offensive inside Gaza. The Israeli military also claimed there was an exchange of fire at the Israel-Lebanon border where it allegedly killed a group of Hezbollah fighters. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met Netanyahu in Tel Aviv. While addressing a press conference, Blinken reiterated that Israel has the right to do everything possible to ensure the 7th October attack does not happen again. He also said that it's necessary to protect civilians caught in the crossfire. These statements come a day after U.S. President Joe Biden called for a humanitarian pause in the war. We're now joined by Major Libby Weiss, spokesperson of the Israel Defense Forces. Major, uh, Major Libby, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Let me begin by asking you, in terms of neutralizing Hamas's ability to strike Israel, how much has been achieved uh, and uh, to what extent have you been able to uh, dismantle the terror infrastructure of the Hamas? Well, we certainly have made progress, but we understand that this is going to be a long uh, effort. Uh, we know that Hamas is deeply ingrained uh, within the Gaza Strip and certainly within the civilian areas within the Gaza Strip. But we continue to target Hamas. And just yesterday, 130 Hamas terrorists were targeted and eliminated by Israel. And we continue to do that and we'll do it as long as necessary. Uh, what about rockets being fired against Israel uh, from Gaza? Could you give us a sense whether the fire, the attack from there has declined or the number of strikes coming from Gaza uh, continues to be at the same level? Well, since the start uh, of this war, since October 7th, Hamas has launched more than 9,000 rockets towards Israel, uh, covering large portions of the country in rocket fire. And just in the last few days, there has still been uh, sirens and rocket fire towards Tel Aviv. So this is something that we understand is another one of the efforts that Hamas is making to terrorize Israelis. Right. Uh, when it comes to the question of a humanitarian pause, and I believe uh, this is what Secretary Blinken is also urging Prime Minister Netanyahu to do, have a humanitarian pause so that great, uh, aid can uh, flow into uh, Gaza. Uh, is Israel likely to allow that or uh, is that all subject to the hostages being released? Well, this is very much a political issue and one that the uh, politicians will have to decide and the IDF will facilitate whatever decision is made. I do want to emphasize that humanitarian aid is currently going into the Gaza Strip. And in the last 11 days, more than 300 trucks have entered. But we will do whatever the government decides on this issue and facilitate it as much as possible. When it comes to limiting this uh, conflict, there is a lot of worry one, about the humanitarian crisis, about this becoming a genocide, as some countries and some bodies have pointed out. UAE has warned against the risk of a regional spillover. Uh, what will Israel do to limit the scale of this conflict and to stop this from becoming a regional war? Well, we've already taken significant steps to minimize the impact on civilians within the Gaza Strip. And I, I'd like to add here that I believe we are the only party in this conflict that actually has any concern for civilians on either side of the conflict. And more than two weeks ago, we provided notice to civilians to move from the northern part of the Gaza Strip to the south, an area that we have designated as being safer. We did this to our operational detriment, uh, but we did this because the civilians in Gaza are not our target. And we know that more than 8,000 have moved towards the southern part of the Strip. And we also know that Hamas is making it difficult for those who remain. And right now, the responsibility and pressure should be on Hamas to care for their own civilian population and to make sure that civilians are moved to areas that are safer at this time. Uh, but we are making significant efforts to mitigate the impact on civilians. And we are the only party doing that as of now. Right. Now, what is the ultimate objective of this invasion of the military operation that's taking place? Uh, do you think things can start slowing down, winding down uh, if the hostages are released? Any clarity could you if you could give us now on what are the major objectives emerging 
uh, as this war has now been uh, going on for over three weeks? We have two very clear goals, and I would say they go hand in hand with one another. One is to dismantle Hamas and make sure that Hamas is never in a position of power to launch terror against Israelis. We saw just a month ago what happens when Hamas has the capacity and the ability to commit acts of terror against Israelis. And we saw the massacre and we saw the slaughter that took place of more than 1,400 Israelis. So first, we will make sure that they never can do that again. And second, equally important, is the release of the hostages. We have 241 Israelis who are being being held. And the fastest way, and it's important to emphasize this, the fastest way for them to be uh, to come home would be for Hamas to release them immediately without any terms or conditions. Uh, the fact that Hamas took them in such a violent and horrific way is a war crime. And the international community should be putting pressure on Hamas to release them immediately. But their return is also a top priority for us. And those, those goals together go hand in hand. Uh, and we believe we can accomplish both. Right. Uh, Major Libby, thank you so much for joining us on the program with all the updates uh, on the ground and the major objectives at present. We're now joined by Vail Awad, political analyst and West Asia expert. Mr. Awad, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Uh, as you hear the Israel Defense Ministry, Israel Defense Forces spokesperson saying that their objective remains complete elimination of Hamas's ability to carry out attacks, uh, a full release of hostages as well. What is the risk that you're seeing of this escalating? Uh, there has been talk about the involvement of the Hezbollah, uh, involvement of uh, Iran and some of Iran's supported groups as well. Thank you, Barry Shikta. I think what is the major uh, issue here is either is the objective is seriously to eliminate Hamas. If it is the objective to eliminate Hamas, that what we are witnessing on the ground is the total genocide. We have been seeing that each one fighter of Hamas is costing 10,000 of a Palestinian's life because there are 2.3 million Palestinians staying in Gaza Strip, which is a concentration camp. Everybody knows this. And now we can see the people who are fleeing, where the Israeli telling them to move from the north to the south and following them by the drone and by the machine guns and killing them one by one in the street. You can see that that body, you can see lots of videos coming, emerging from Gaza, where all these people have been killed. So if this is continue for no reason, just to uh, ethnic cleansing and, and, uh, and empty Palestine from the Palestinian, then I think the regional war will be expanded and Israel will not be safe, neither today nor in the future, because uh, what is happening on the ground, Barishik, mm. is a clear indication that there is no way of return unless and until you sit down across the table to find a political solution. But if you continue with this, um, uh, this right. past killing, I think then we are heading for a more trouble to happen because violence will go, bring violence and it will expand for, no, for sure. Mr. Awad, I'd also like to ask you about a conversation which has taken place between Prime Minister Modi and uh, the President of uh, the UAE. And both sides have discussed the deteriorating security situation and loss of civilian lives in the war between Israel and uh, Hamas. They've spoken about the need for an early resolution of the security and humanitarian situation. So how do you see India's concern, India's stand, vis-a-vis uh, -vis India stand at the start of this war? I, I think India is uh, very much on the record of knowing and witnessing and cautiously uh, witnessing and uh, observing what's happening on the ground because the killing in Palestine uh, and the Gaza Strip, uh, to be frank, is beyond anybody's imagination. So I think all this anger in the streets of the Arab world, in India, in the West, is a clear indication that nobody can take it lightly because here we are seeing a people getting killed. The humanitarian uh, issues is very much, and that is why I think this talk with the prime minister, with different leaders, not only with the UAE, but also with the Egyptian, with the other uh, stakeholders, is a clear indication that there's also a worry time, worrisome time for India because India has a stake at the West Asian Affairs in the uh, GCC. It has more than uh, 8 million people, you know, uh, Indian leaving there 
and there are 14 right. million Indian visit annually. We have also a uh, revenue of more than $75 billion annually to India, plus the sec uh, food security and, uh, and energy security. So India can play a major role in calling for a halt of all hostilities and go and apply and ad adhere to the UN Security Council resolutions in this regard. Right. Mr. Awad, when it comes to the Arab world, when it comes to the Middle East, who is in the strongest position right now? We heard the IDF, spo IDF spokesperson and she said that we hope and urge the international community to put pressure on Hamas to release the hostages. Now, when it comes to mediation, when it comes to back-channel diplomacy, who really holds the keys in the Middle East currently? Well, I don't want to comment on uh, a PR exercise and uh, uh, American accents, who is uh, supposed to be uh, an Israeli. I don't really believe on all this uh, barricade. My own barricade. My only concern here is that there are the backdoor uh, talks. There are already diplomacy in Qatar, where the Israelis are meeting uh, with the uh, Hamas leadership's representative there, including the United States representative. And I think frantically they are trying to find a face-saving formula to release the uh, Israelis hostages from Hamas and also an exchange of prisoners. But till now, uh, Netanyahu is refusing to accept this kind of barter because that will not uh, keep him in power because he's already having cases against him in a weak government. I think what we have been witnessing uh, mm -hmm. now is that everybody wanted to find a solution and a source of hostility ending because uh, some sector in the Israeli uh, ultra-nationalist party are calling to take full advantage of the current situation since the American and the West are fully behind Israel. So that let us expel the Palestinians into right. Gaza, uh, into Sinai uh, Peninsula. But I think the Egyptian and the Jordanian understand the game plan. They will not allow West Bank. Uh, Palestinian to be kicked out of West Bank and East Jerusalem to Jordan, nor they will allow the Palestinian to be kicked into uh, the Sinai Peninsula. But I think, Barikshit, uh, the important part here is that the plot has been exposed and what has been declared as objectives is seriously they are not the objectives because we cannot, while we are talking, we are counting dead body in the street and all of them, all of them, I mean, few only from the Hamas are, are civilian, are okay. paying the price and the cold in war time and it's in peace time. And there was no peace in Palestine till now. All right. Uh, so very, very complicated uh, political interests as well on the ground, conflicting interests. Very difficult to find uh, middle ground right now. But thanks very much, Abhay Lavad, for joining us. We're going to take a short break, but coming up, 28 nations have signed an agreement affirming the potential of AI and calling for heightened security and regulations. India, US, UK, uh, even China are among the signatories to the Bletchley Declaration. A special discussion when we're back.